So now we are moving on to the programming. So the programming of Arduino is not that hard as long as you understand the concept. So in my case, I already mentioned that I'm including two servo motor, one for the arm and one for the gripper. So that's why I'm including a servo library. So I'm calling a servo library. Then only the Arduino know that, hey, this guy is using a servo motor. For that, I'm including servo.h. And then since I'm including servo, I have to name it and I'm giving a name arm and gripper. In your case, it could be anything, not necessarily the same thing. After that, I'm including a character named T. I'll explain in a bit what is that. I already mentioned that the sensor I'm using have two pins, trick pin and an eco pin. I told you that trick pin and eco pin, you could put it to any pins that are available on the Arduino. So for that, I connected the trick pin and the eco pin to the pin number six and seven on the Arduino. So I'm using constant integer trick pin six and eco pin seven. After that, I'm introducing two different characters called duration and distance. This is for the sensor calculation. Once I initialize all my variables, I'm gonna move into my setup. I mentioned you that there are four pins coming out of the edge bridge, which is pretty much driving the motor. So in my case, in one, in two, in three, in four, from the edge bridge are connected to 13, 12, 11, and 10, respectively on the Arduino board. When I say pin mode, I have to open the bracket and say, hey, the 13 pin that I'm connected to, make it as an output. So I'm putting as an output. Same goes with the 12, 11, and 10. You could see that here the comment is left motor forward and reverse, right motor forward and reverse. Now the pins are set for the edge bridge. Now let's move on to the sensor. Same thing for sensor, pin mode, the trick pin and eco pin that I enabled here are set as output and input respectively. So here I'm setting the trick pin as an output and eco pin as an input. Arduino knows that there are two servos named arm and gripper, but it doesn't quite know where that arm and gripper are connected to. So I told you the yellow pin from the servos are connected to a PWM signal, which is the Arduino ports. In my case, I connected to number three and number two on my Arduino board. So serial.begin is to initialize the serial connection at 9600 bits per second. After that's done, I'm gonna close the bracket and open a void loop. After that, I'm gonna close my bracket and then open a void loop. I'm gonna use digital write, turn on trick pin, and then delay for one second, and then using the same digital write, I'm gonna make the trick pin to go low. So I already introduced these two functions, these two variables, duration and distance. I'm making an equation. This is for the sensor. This whole thing is for the sensor. I'm using a pulse in function to make the eco pin to go high. This means whenever the pulse in is high, it means the pulse in is waiting for the pin to go high and then it's going to start timing and then it's going to wait for the pin to go low. Then it's going to take the time it took to go from high to low and then it's going to store it into the duration. So once the duration has some value, we're going to call my other function, which is the distance. Distance is equal to duration divided by two. Why? Because the sensor is going to send a wave and then that's going to hit an object. It's going to come back to the sensor. So the time it taken is literally multiplied by two because the time it takes to go from the sensor to the object and coming back is literally double. But I want only the one time. I want only the time that it takes to go from the sensor to the object. That's why I'm dividing the duration by two. Once I get that number, I'm gonna divide it by 29.1, which is the pace of sound. So I'm gonna use that serial.printin to make the value that is stored into distance as a number or as a text that is readable by human. Now the sensor is partially done. Let's move on to how are we connecting the phone to the Arduino. Calling that T that I created here, I'm putting T is equal to serial.read. Here, what is the T is doing is, is reading whatever the value that I'm sending from my phone. And then I'm gonna print it as a readable text for a human. So now I'm gonna open an if statement where if t is equal to f, so if t receives a character from my phone as an f, 
it's going to make the pin 13 and 11 to go high which makes the right and left motors to go forward because 13 and 11 if you look at it 13 is for the left motor forward and 11 is for the right motor forward so this will make the 13 and 11 will go forward same goes with b if t reads b it will make 12 and 10 go to high but if i want my car to turn left then the left side motor has to stay firm while the right side motor has to rotate forward so for that i'm going to make my 11 pin high so if you look up here 11 is right motor forward same goes with right i'm going to make the 13 high for s whenever it receives a letter s it's going to make everything stop with this code on your hand your car should be able to travel perfectly fine so let's check how on the app we are going to send this command to the Arduino. So the app that I'm using is Bluetooth Serial Controller. So after you download it, I'm going to open it. So how do we set this app? If you click on the setting button, you see there are so many functions up here. So let's go with the button because the button section is where we're actually going to spend most of the time. So first up is the name. It's so much easier if you change the name of the button because then only you can easily control it. Now, let's go back to the visibility command I'm gonna get to just in a second if you click visibility I could set only the ones I want to see now we are going to go back to the command this is where the app is going to send whatever we want it to send so if you click command so in my case button 2 is my forward so if you look at my code you could see in order to move forward the T should receive a letter uppercase F so I'm gonna click button 2 I'm going to send a letter call F. Make sure you put uppercase. Exactly what you write on your code should reflect here. So click F. OK. Now button 2 is going to send a character name F. Same goes with button 4, 5, 6. According to the code, it's going to be L, S, and R. That's it. Now let's move on to the servo motor. How are we setting up the servo motor? So servo motor, I mentioned that it always goes to a home position. So I'm going to set my arm to be parallel to the ground when it is at its home position from there in order to pick the cup up i have to first go down for that i'm setting my t is equal to o whenever t receives o let's write arm dot right to 70. so it's going to go to 70 degree in my case 70 degree works perfectly fine in your case you might have to play around with the degrees because it doesn't come like that so now my open close up and down are perfectly fine. Servo should be perfectly fine. Now let's go back to the sensor. Remember we already set up the sensor but we are not quite done with the sensor. For the sensor, I have to set a certain distance. If my sensor is detecting anything less than 10 centimeter, it has to stop. If it's not less than 10, then just keep it going. Make it all high. That's it. Before you send your code to the Arduino, always remove those rx and tx wire that are connected to the arduino board all right so there you have it the programming and the configuration of the app so now we have all configured the app and sent the program to the arduino let's see how we are actually going to connect the bluetooth to the app so i'm gonna connect my card first i'm gonna go search and the name of this Bluetooth is DSD Tech. So I'm going to go here and click it. It's going to be connecting and it's connected. Once you're connected, you're good to go. I have to press the forward. It will go forward. It will go reverse. It will go reverse. Down. It will go down. Up. Open. Close. With not even a single latency, it's working perfectly fine. So the Bluetooth module is perfectly fine. And also I'm going to show you the, if the sensor is working. There you have it. That's it for me. I showed you everything you need. So right now is your turn to go and build your Arduino based Bluetooth controlled obstacle avoidance car. I'm super excited to look at your projects. So leave a comment and I will definitely check it. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.